Commander Cocking is on Captain Verd here for another, as always, Trokyard's Mission Briefing. Do I even have to remind you guys that it's the more relaxed discussion show that talks about ships of any part of the Trek universe, discusses, theorizes, and waits for audience feedback? Do I even have to say that anymore? Oh, wait, I just did. Whoops. Anyway, this week we are pushing into the future, post Voyager, post Nemesis, and post Canon, to the fan favorite Vesta class from the Destiny novel. At 620 meters in length, this sleek and advanced Federation multi-mission explorer was the new testbed for the Federation's first quantum slipstream drive. Mm. Love the looks of this ship, but to be honest, I know very little about it, as I have never used it in Star Trek Online. So I guess that makes me a bad cat. So let's take a look and hear my rookie take on it. <laughs> so the first picture is a great shot. I love this profile of this ship. It's very sleek. And uh, yeah, a, a great progression from like the Enterprise E. This is, this is the, I think it's one of the ships that the fans ask for the most, and we keep seeing yeah. this picture in particular pop up all the time. Um, so I'm sort of used to this shape and this this picture, but it, it's it's a really interesting design. Um, it's very, very sleek, like you say, but yet they've bulked out the bottom. Mm. It's interesting. And those engines, that is a cool engine design, I've got to say. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I love how you know Enterprise E kind of abolished the neck mm -hmm. for the, that kind of design. This really takes it a little bit further and bulks that out and makes it all one cohesive shape. Very nice. Yeah, but the, the, so back on these engines. Um, I love that it's just one sleek line of blue. Yeah. That's kind of different. Like it, it feels much more refined. Like they don't need to represent that le level of hey, we've got engines. Uh, yeah, the, the sleekness. Um, it's a very interesting craft. There's a lot of colours to it as well. So different shades. Um, a lot of blacks, which is interesting. The whole bridge part is in black, and the whole bottom. Interesting. That's one of the things, that, things I like about Star Trek Online ships is the grey and the black color palette for the hulls. Yeah, they really went all out with Star Trek Online ships, doing a hell of a lot of interesting designs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's go to the next picture. This is, oh, brilliant, beautiful, yes, Aventine, which is the one I think everyone knows um, as from the novels. This is a amazing Alcars. And it's a Vesta class Mark II, so it's oh. a Mark I version as well. Interesting, yet more to work out. <laughs> I think one thing I noticed straight away from this is that how, I'm not going to say feeble, but when you look at the bulk of the middle of the primary hull, and it sleeks all the way in to the absolutely razor thin back of the secondary hull, I guess, going into the pylons, that is a serious curve, you know? And it's got a huge computer core in the center there. Usually the computer core that we've seen in these kind of diagrams for older ships is like three decks. This looks to be at least six decks, five or six decks. And it's it's got two of the pictures, so it might even be two a split computer core. Because if you look, it's got two warp engines, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. They look connected, so sort of working in unison. It's interesting. I guess you know one of the, one of the backstory things about this ship is that it was the new slipstream drive. So you can imagine to make mm -hmm. that a viable system, maybe two warp cores and two computer cores was needed. Maybe one just to regulate the slipstream matrix and one for normal system operation. Probably, yeah. Science. Um, well, I've got to note that this, this particular L card is a little bit empty because all that, if you look just in front of the computer core, apart from the yeah. tennis, tennis court, which is clearly what that is, you've got a lot of empty space. They've obviously, you haven't fleshed it out fully. If you look at the uh, the front of the ship, on that curvature down the, the bottom of the front, you've got the stand torpedo launcher. And I'm guessing that's going to be a quantum torpedo launcher just underneath it. Probably, yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. And then uh, the shuttles are fun because you've got all the different versions of shuttles there. You've got the nice Enterprise E Mark 11, I believe, the more classic, and then you've got the Enterprise, uh, the Voyager version, sorry, and then another bigger one, and even a Work B, which sort of has its, has its retractable thing. It's fun. Yeah. And the bridge, I mean, that normally, you know, a bridge for these classic ships have a bridge module with layers. This is just so sleekly built where there's a little bump. It's interesting. All right, so moving on to the next picture. This is the Aventine, but it's, uh, wow. I like the color palette. It's kind of a bluish gray. It's a lot of black. different colors. And this is a great shot from uh, Mark's actual, because man designed it as Mark. Raidmaker, um, and he designed the Aventine for the ship's line calendar, and this is one of the ones from his website. So this is his render, his thing, and it's very detailed. Um, a lot of yeah, cool that stuff. Profile, that profile is amazing. I love that. So one thing I noticed, um, one fun thing I said about the warp engines is that sleek line, but as you can see from the side view, it goes along and then up, and then it curves back around on the top, so it's really even. It, it sleeks out by not actually doing very much. Um, and one thing, we when we discussed the intro to this video, uh, as in before we filmed it, if you look at that top photo, that looks like the bottom to me, 
because that's where the secondary hull would normally be. That's the yeah. top of the ship. Yeah. yeah. You can tell by the uh, warp engines that it's definitely the top of the ship. And uh, going back to the profile for just one second, yep. with those colors and that shape, it looks like a shark. It's it, very yeah. shark like. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a space for teeth and there's. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting because uh, normally you'd put um, lots of uh, escape pods on the saucer, but now they've got lots of escape pods on the side of the ship because you're trying to fit them all in. And it really changes the. The feel of it when you have all these extra shapes that we know from certain parts of the ship and other parts because it's a different feel and you can now see the phaser strips which i was having trouble seeing before if you look at the top photo it's the entire sleekness of the hull is that one big phaser strip and at the bottom there's a really nice sleek phaser strip again on the yes. engine pylon and again on the bottom so it's actually looks less well armed than other ships it looks like there's less phaser strips but they're longer if that makes sense yeah. so it's, it's yeah and if you look, I love the, how the impulse engines feel. They're like a separate component added on, but it gives an extra bulk and extra feel of power. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing that kind of strikes me is those grills on the top part, which would be the dorsal part, I guess. As in above the uh, skateboards. Yes. Uh, very mm. interesting. They look, they're Not very, sure what those could be. Very scaly, which I think fits your shark motif. And when you look at the side, very you know, looks like that. Yeah, they look like gills. Yeah. Maybe they are oh. for the slipstream matrix, maybe? I don't know. But, they're, but we see the shuttle bay at the back, so that's not that. Hmm. I don't know. It's interesting. And I noticed from this, there's two different impulse engines. There's the one primary, as you can see, the big black bits with the red uh, red lit up. But actually, back on the uh, engine struts, they've got another two impulse engines not lit up. But I'm pretty sure those are impulse engines. So it must be yeah, fast. I was, I was wondering if those were... So the next one is uh, say it, still a Vesta class, um, but this is one of the variations or variants as we see in Star Trek Online. So this is the same components, roughly different sort of, or same shape, sorry, different components. Um, and they've got a slightly more evolved or even less evolved version of the warp engines with a larger uh, blue section at the back. And it's even sleeker, perhaps? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's more, it's more integrated and you know, it looks, looks nice. And it's interesting that the registry number is on the side mm. instead of the front. So. Yeah, it's it's more um, more curvy, I think, rather than those harsher lines. Yeah. It's nice. It, it looks doesn't look a Star Trek though. I think. Yeah, I agree. I think this one looks a little bit. The the, the other one looks more Federation aesthetic than this one does. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gonna be the Mark One or the Mark Three variation. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so the next one is a. Let me go work this out. Top, I suppose. Yeah, top because the engines. Yeah, it's top version of the same same one. Um, that black and blue. Wow, that really does look different, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Mm. And the phaser strips are less less strong on this. Um, it almost second. looks like it has four impulse crystals too, mm, uh -huh. uh, like on the refit. Yeah, kind of. There's two behind the bridge, and then two kind of forward of the bridge with those uh, accents around them. Mm. Which makes sense. It looks like there's four impulse engines there, so. It's cool. I don't, know, I don't know if that's what that would be, though, that far away from the engine, but. Although we saw that the warp, warp engines were around about there, so maybe they do go up and they just go around, maybe. I don't know. All right, so the next one is an ortho of all the views, and then we get to see the bottom view with the deflector. Mm. Huge deflector. And those are impulse engines on the end yes. warp stretch because they're lit up on this one. Uh, the front and rear pro. Uh, views I'm not a big fan of personally. The engine struts doing sort of a, that shape is quite They're strange. too high, I think. They need to be tucked down a little bit. Yes. Yeah, they, they, they take that curvature to a odd degree. But I do like the two impulse engines. Although if this I know they're not thrust, but if they were thrust it'd hit the the pylons. Um Yeah look how they line up with the ones on the struts yeah. from the rear there. I like how if you look at the warp engines the front it looks like an eye. It's interesting. I wonder why the design choice. Hmm. Yeah. And Good the uh, and again same thing with the deflector. There's now a lined internal uh, or armor, or maybe that's the slipstream matrix. I don't know, but it's certainly interesting. And something I didn't notice in the previous version, if you look at the front view, there's a curving down, mm -hmm. which is that I kind of like. I kind of like. Yeah, that. it's interesting. A lot of escape pods on the bottom. If you if you look, mm -hmm. mm, it's fun. So the next one is uh, wow, beautiful. The shot it's a shot in an, in a nebula, I suppose. Uh, nice and detailed again by Mark. So thanks, Mark. Um, wow, really nice and detailed. Yeah, I love the I love that black uh, highlight and then the the line, the silver line almost around it. 
really makes a ship pop. And I wish Federation ships had this kind of look. And it it's still the TV show. doesn't make it feel too aggressive or too negative. Like it really feels, it has that balance, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I I just think it's a great look. I love the Star Trek Online ships for the like I said, the color palettes are just amazing. Yeah, and again, you can see the shuttle bay is more obvious here. It's interesting. There's such a lot of space after the shuttle bay, they could have extended that neck, but they didn't. I wonder if that's something else comes out of that part, maybe? I don't know. But uh... Or it could be because, you know, to keep the warp field intact, two warp engines. Very true. Don't get Can't have anything blocking those, remember. All right, so the next one is a front shot again, more detail. Wow. The engines look less like eyes in this one. Yes, <laughs> I prefer that, I think. Yeah, and it looks like there's a 10 forward or something there. Uh the deflector is pretty, pretty interesting. It's got a primary sort of dish and then black and then a big blue. It's interesting. And then we've got a little dish with inside the dish. So, mm -hmm. mm. I'm a real fan of this general saucer shape, but like I said, the engines don't do it for me. They need to be tucked down and not so curvy pylons. Yes. And the secondary hull is kind of ass for me. It could be a little bit better. And but... uh, you can see the two torpedo launchers underneath the 10 forwards. Uh, it's got a lot of layers to this, hasn't it? And very odd shaped. Like all the angles are Federation-ish, you know? Yeah. The ceiling's going to be very strange in this ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I like how glossy the black is in the top. I know this is not against space or anything, but I don't think it should be an, a gloss black. That doesn't really feel right to me. No, it would be more like a matte black for sure. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is the back of it, and we get, uh, again, some of perspective. The engines don't line up in this version. There's a bit more clearance, um, which, which obviously works better. Shuttle you can bay. see a secondary shuttle bay there, mark oh, number two. That's cool. That's really cool. So yeah. uh, I was right when I said it might come out. So it can be you know, brought down and launched, or I don't know. It's interesting. I like it's got two RCS thrusters on either side of the warp yeah. engine. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and again, the color palette is so distinct. I mean, the, the light blues, the blacks, the whites. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next picture is just a detailed orthos again, uh, multi-mission explorer. Yes, what it's called. Warp nine point nine nine. Quantum slipstream velocities. And mark twelve phaser cannons, quantum torpedoes, obviously. Uh, and you've got the uh, the patch at the bottom. You tape the Phoenicia best of class. I was just about to say that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the the colors are less dynamic in this version. That's probably just because the, the the darker hue. But it's interesting. Again, that that side profile is just so amazingly sleek. Yeah. And it feel but, it does feel stretched. I think. But I like it, and but the front ruins it for me. I'm sorry. And even that top view from that angle, it just looks way stretched, like you said. So. Again, it, it, getting ships that look good from every angle is is a difficult task. Um, in yeah. D, I mean, come on, it looks good from certain angles. You know, it's difficult. Um, it's cool. So the next one is another uh, sort of ortho. But it says some other information. We've oh, got a new patch. Uh, it's 3 million tons. So if you ever want to build your own, 3 million. Uh, and the warp engines are different on this one. They're not bulbs. They're uh, much yeah, different. Yeah, they're shape. different. They're different. Wow, the uh, the warp engines are yeah, a little bit different shaped. I was going to say quite a bit, but not not really actually, actually look at them. <clears throat> well, if you look at the front, they look a little bit further up than the previous version. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Uh, seven vessels of the class were in service in oh. February 2381. Interesting. Cool. And the next one is, is again another side profile. Uh, I'm guessing this is from Star Trek Online because they tend to add nebulas and stuff. Yeah. Um, if, if so, it's a very close representation of the, of the Vesta. All right, so moving on to the last picture. This is it in battle. Look at uh -huh. those weapons. Are those quantum torpedoes being launched at the bottom? Because if so, somebody's in trouble. <laughs> But yeah, you look that, at look at how many multiple points are coming off those phaser strips. That's awesome. That I mean, it does make sense. I mean, you either have micro phaser strips to have multiple, or you have like said the big phaser strips. I think that's what they went for here. Um, I think I think part of the Destiny storyline is they get they fight the Borg. So that looks like what's happening with the the green beam. And I mean, come on, fighting the Borg, you would launch all quantums you can, wouldn't you? True. True. Uh, and this is so, yeah. the third anniversary. So happy anniversary, whenever that was, 2012. So happy sixth anniversary. <laughs> cool. um, I do want to bring up though before we before we close out what are your thoughts on again we haven't fully researched this special because that's the point of mission briefing but what do you think of the idea of this being Starfleet's first quantum slipstream vehicle the first obviously that technology Voyager 
roughly knew how to use them and it wasn't a success, it worked, it wasn't a success. What do you think about Starfleet now trying to make its own slipstream ship? It's about bloody time. <laughs> Starfleet needs to enhance new technologies. Come on now. No, but I think it's a great uh, great ship for that. I mean, just the stretched out profile, I think, really kind of makes it look faster. So, I mean, you've got it, to consider that part of this shape, if that was the, one of the mission profiles, they're going to be linking off the Dauntless because that was the slipstream capable ship. So the, the bigger deflector, the very sleek lines, it certainly feels more less aggressive because you know it's not a warship so yeah um, so yeah i think it's a, a great a great advancement in federation design aesthetic and really looks fast it looks like it could do faster than the highest board yeah based on your professional eye is this ship slipstream capable based on its shape? absolutely absolutely yeah. looks like it got stuck coming out of slipstream and got stretched and then it's like oh shit that looks good let's keep it like that <laughs> Um, and I also noticed one last thing is it has got a secondary deflector at the front, similar to Voyager. Um, mm -hmm. That might be a navigational deflector, while the main one is the actual. Or a sensor pallet as well, maybe. Yeah. Um, I, d I still love those engines. They're really interesting. I wouldn't say they're what I'd like the E to turn into. I still prefer the E and those you know, more of a blue engine. But in terms of design, it's still a cool design. Yeah. So, any right. final thoughts on the Vesta class? Nice ship. Great look. I need to actually play with it. <laughs> Ooh, that sounded dirty. In Star Trek Online to see what she's capable of. But I mean, yeah, great ship. Yeah, that might be a thing we have to do in the future. Just fly it around and see how much butt it can kick. There you go. And that is it for the Vesta class. I look forward to learning more about her and even reading, possibly, the novels, as I am a Esri Dax fan, or should I say Captain Dax. Anyway, um, if you like this episode, please like and subscribe and share episodes on your Facebook or anywhere, because that sort of thing really does help us out guys because we want new audience all the time who can just be you know brought into the track yards family so uh, if you've got a ship you want to see next time please put it in the comments below and tell us what you think of this ship is it your favorite ever and why or do you think it's a very 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 stretched voyager with weirdness cells <laughs> whatever you think let us know um and we'll see you next time on a track yards mission briefing bye guys bye everybody